Lord Jesus. My boy house gone, man. It's gone. Here in Monroe, Louisiana, they were among the first to take the brunt of these storms. Tornadoes picking up these two cars behind me, smashing them right into this house. Neighbors tell us they had to go inside and rescue the homeowners. They would survive, but as these storms moved on, many others would not. It took our roof off. That tree almost went through our house, but by the grace of God, did not. Tennessee, the latest state plagued with severe storms, Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi, all declaring a state of emergency after violent storms, very powerful tornadoes, and torrential rain ripped through the south Easter Sunday. In Mississippi, winds stronger than 150 miles per hour, leaving a scene of destruction. Back here in Monroe, the tornado taking direct aim at the regional airport with planes scattered across the field. This city hard hit. The mayor hesitant to designate shelters for the misplaced. Normally we would talk about opening shelters. Right now, shelters are the last resort because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I feel quite honored and humbled to be here and to be able to do my part to help combat this virus. Hey everyone, I'm Tom Yamas with On Location here outside the hospital ship, The Comfort, which got off to a slow start. It's now seen COVID-19 patients. The Navy tells ABC News they are working with hospitals to identify patients that they can bring here. We've been trying to make sure that all the patients' labs are done and just making sure we know exactly where they're going and what's going on with them. All of this, as Governor Andrew Cuomo says, the curve is flattening. The rate of hospitalizations is going down, but we're still dealing with a giant and enormous death toll. We're talking about nearly 800 people that we're losing almost every day. 758 people lost their lives in a 24-hour period. I speak to many families who are going through this, many people who lost loved ones. As New York tries to get a handle on the deadly virus, other hot zones near New York are emerging. In Massachusetts, the number of confirmed cases soaring by 21% over two days. In Pennsylvania, the governor predicting a surge this week after more than 2,800 new cases were reported on Saturday. If we begin to slip in our efforts to distance ourselves socially, we could very easily see explosive growth rates. With Americans desperate to return to a sense of normalcy, a key step to getting there is testing. The National Institutes of Health just announced it will test 10,000 healthy volunteers to see if they have antibodies for the virus. They're joining researchers across the country, including at USC, in the race to safely reopen the country. If I'm immune, and scientifically I've been proven to be immune, then I can re-enter the workforce and I can play a bigger role in making sure we're safer. The hope is people who have antibodies will be immune, although that's not for sure at this point. And to show just how dire the situation is, Apple and Google, two tech rivals, are teaming up to develop smartphone software that some are calling a potential game changer in the race to trace the virus. It's called contact tracing. The technology will let people voluntarily report if they've been infected, then alert every phone they come into contact with. The hope is the technology can dramatically drop the number of new cases. The concerns are with privacy. Both Apple and Google pledge that your personal information will be safe but the ACLU says there's room for improvement. The U.S. Air Force's Thunderbirds, based at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, performed a flyover above every hospital in the Las Vegas Valley on Saturday. This view from the cockpit shows the squadron then flying next to the famed Las Vegas Strip. The hope was to recognize first responders, healthcare professionals, and other workers who are on the front lines battling the coronavirus pandemic. Quarantine was not going to stop the Easter Day fun, so Jessica Pride and her husband Dante threw on his Easter Bunny suit and got to work. They decked their ride out in some pretty fun colors and drove around their Solana Beach neighborhood. We wanted to bring Easter cheer to a dark time and to remind people that we are all in this together and we can still celebrate and we can still be happy. It was a family affair, including Jessica and Dante's children, Naya and Dax, and Jessica's mother, Carolyn. The family maintained a safe distance during their drive-by, waving from their Easter decorated golf cart. 
TSA employees at Dulles International Airport in Virginia have opened up a food bank, hoping to help workers in the airport community who are either out of work or working fewer hours. Stocked with fruits, vegetables, canned and dried goods, as well as some toiletry items, the TSA employees said when they were working without a paycheck during last year's federal government shutdown, others helped them and they simply wanted to return that generosity.